Vande Guru Nisha Bhaktams, Isha Misha Bhattar, Kantat Pakashang, Sitat Shakti Krishna, Chaitanya Sangyatam. Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodito, Nityananda Sahodito, Goro Diye, Pushpavanto Chitro Shando Tamanado, Kantatat Vatna Kam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam, Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyang Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for coming here and being here and worshipping Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasa Adigon Bhaktavinda. A long way from their traditional place of worship, which is the Gorya Vaishnava culture, the worship of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and inspired by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is prominent in Bengal, Orissa, Assam to some extent, Manipur, all these places. North and east of India. But now by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, who is carrying the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Panchatattva, the five principles of pure devotional service are being worshipped all over the world. This Gora uh, Nityananda Doya, we were just singing this, Song of Lochandash Thakur. This is, for me, an old favorite. Everyone has their favorite song, isn't it? Everyone likes music and people have their favorite songs. So. I used to sing this daily in Bangladesh, the capital of Bangladesh, Dhaka. We had a small rented house as an ashram. Now, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Srila Prabhupada's Iskon is very widely spread all over Bangladesh. At that time we had one small ashram of the deities of Gornitai. And I used to sing this daily. So, often when I come into temples where the principal deities are Gornitai, Sri Panchatattva, I like to sing this and that brings back memories of that time and many struggles and hardships we had to undergo to start preaching in Bangladesh and throughout life there will be so many difficulties. We cannot expect in any situation that there will not be difficulties. This Southern California is like paradise. That's what people think until they come here. Well, it is like paradise. The climate's good. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The economy is good, although you may people are saying it's bad, but even if the American economy goes down to half of what it is, it's still better than most places in the world. People have all kinds of facilities and there's a nice beach and countryside and all these things, but still people are miserable. And people are struggling and suffering. You can actually feel it. It's, it's like the whole atmosphere is, is a kind of... Despite the sunny weather, there's a kind of... Apart from the smog hanging over L.A., there's, there's a kind of psychic smog, isn't there? Feeling of misery, loneliness. You can feel a kind of gloom. At least I can. I don't know. What, do you, what about all of you? It's quite... You can feel it in the atmosphere, right? People are actually quite miserable. So, even for devotees, I mean, we always say Krishna consciousness is blissful, but until we're fully Krishna conscious, we have to try to be Krishna conscious, which means we're struggling with the three modes of material nature and 
There are ups and downs, but there's always the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We can, in all difficulties, we can remember that we have a good protector. That there's nothing actually, there's nothing actually wrong. I may have my ups and downs, but if I if I surrender at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the disciplic succession, that they will look after me. Even I'm rascal nonsense and I I forget them and I go towards sense gratification, but they will always help me. So the good friends throughout our life. We have no reason to become depressed. That's very common, isn't it? Depression. The, the, the troubles get too much and you get down into a get down into a lower groove and you just can't get up and out of it and just everything seems life seems black. Whatever we look at, whatever we try to do, it just seems bad. But even if we're struggling in Krishna consciousness, which will happen, we're not saying that automatically when you take to this then everything becomes instant, instant enlightenment. We saw on a website yesterday that uh, someone was offering, you can instantly go to the level of meditation of the great gurus. It's a new secret we discovered. It's obviously completely bogus. And that without doing any, without undergoing tapasya, austerity, or without making the struggle, you can immediately become enlightened to the level of great, highly realized persons. So we didn't bother to look up what brand of cheating they were marketing. But we know that there will be struggles and that through all the struggles at any time we can simply remember Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindana we can remember them and understand that there's really no problem in the world. The only problem is forgetfulness of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta I remember once, uh, well, I was, I was in a class in which, in Mayapur, in which Srila Prabhupada was, he stated that uh, we should never forget that Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in my foolishness, I thought, well, how could we ever forget that? Not, I, not realizing the extent of my own foolishness. Maya is very strong. Did anyone have that realization? <laughs> in, in the beginning stage, you may think, well, it's no problem. I'll just turn Hare Krishna and be self-realized. But after some time, you realize... What is that? Maya re korite joy. Charan na jai. When we try to conquer over Maya, she doesn't let us go. Sadhu kripa bina ar nahi upai. Without the mercy of devotees, there's no other way. Maya is not letting us go very easily. Or, we are not letting Maya go very easily. That's more more apt description. It seems, we're thinking, why doesn't Maya let me go? But the real thing is, why don't I let Maya go? Why am I holding on? We're so accustomed to durashraya, a bad shelter. We're afraid that if I give up my material attachments, what will become of me? We don't have firm faith that by completely surrendering to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he will look after us and we will be eternally blissful. In an early edition of Back to Godhead magazine there was a story given by uh, Hanuman Prasad Poda who was actually one of the, the founder of Gita Press. 
those of you who are from the, especially from the Hindi speaking area of India, you probably know what is Gita Press, at least your parents, they knew, because it used to be in every house in North India there was Gita Press Gita and Gita Press Ram Charitmanas. Nowadays I don't know, but it used to be. So he had written an article, and in that, there were, and often the dramas were played, used to be, of, based on this story, that there was, there was a river, and on one side there were people walking around carrying heavy loads, big heavy loads of stones on their backs. Everyone walked around with a big heavy load. And the one who had the bigger load was considered the most prestigious. And on the other side were devotees chanting Hare Krishna and being happy. So obviously this is an analogous to the material world and the spiritual world. We have to cross over from the material world to come to the spiritual world. So the people on the blissful side of the river, the chanting Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasa Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare the people on that side they're always calling to people on the other side come on come on over here it's great it's wonderful they say no we're going to carry our loads we're going to carry our loads it's our responsibility my father carried a load my grandfather carried a load. Everyone carries a load. Where are all you crazy people? So some people, they'd say, okay, I'll come. But they didn't want to give up their load, so they just sink in the river. But some people, a few people, they'd get the idea and say, hey, we've got to give up the load. And just then we can easily cross. But most people didn't want to give it up. They were thinking, how can we live? Everyone has a big load on their back. How can I give it up? It would be against our sacred principles. What will I do if I don't have a load on my back? Look at those people on the other side. They're, they're standing up straight and chanting and dancing. They're very strange people. I don't think I should be like that. But those who were intelligent and fortunate, they threw off their loads. And even though everyone else said, Hey, what are you doing? You can't do that. You're in Maya. <laughs> you can't give up your heavy load. Come back. It's a sin. But still, those who are fortunate, they would throw off their load and cross the river and join the Sankirtan party and chant Hare Krishna and be happy. So, what is that load? These are our material attachments. And carrying that, it, it's, we, don't, we may not have full faith that there is a place where we can go. There is a state of consciousness that we can be in that we don't need these material attachments. Not only do we not need them, but they are unnecessary burdens. Just like you don't it's completely superfluous to the, the load carriers. It's completely superfluous. They don't need it at all, but they think that they need it. And due to uh, social pressure, they think, well, I have to have this. So everyone, it, it, it's a condition. It's group condition. Everyone thinks we have to, we have to be like this. We can't imagine what it's like to be free of the burden. So Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself and he came to this world and showed what it is like to be free of the burden of material attachments and fully absorbed in love of Krishna. Undoubtedly it is difficult or almost impossible for materialistic people to understand this or appreciate this. When we hear descriptions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing, his voice faltering in ecstasy, sometimes falling on the ground in ecstasy, and we think, wow, that's, that's very strange. It doesn't sound very respectable. 
I wouldn't want to be seen doing that. But persons who are fortunate, they will have faith in these descriptions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and say, yes, I want to follow in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and sing and sing the names of Krishna and dance. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very fortunate. Sorry, he has come to make us very fortunate. Persons who are fortunate, they will take that mercy. It's offered to all without preconsideration. Of it. It's not that one has to be born in India or a Hindu or a Brahmana or a PhD or has to be a very great philosopher. Patra, 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 bicha nahi nahi sthana sthana jejaha pai tari de premadam. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without considering or all of the Panchatattva, without considering who is eligible and who is not eligible. They simply gave love of Krishna to whoever was willing to take it. Because if we, in this Kali Yoga, if it's to be considered, who is eligible to get this highest bliss of love of Krishna? The answer is nobody. In the, not only in Kali Yoga, in any Yoga. In this is described as Brahmara Durlava Prim. This level of love of Krishna is difficult even for Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, to attain, even to even imagine. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving that to everyone, however fallen they may be. Now, just as this afternoon I was discussing a little bit or Mahatma Prabhu is telling me that giving few insights into the uh, rapidly degrading condition of society in the West. We've been talking about this all our lives. When I was when I was a child, I used to hear people of my parents' generation talking about how everything's going down so badly. Society is not what it used to be. And then our generation contributed to that uh, downward spiral. We took it to another level of degradation. And now we're seeing people are... It's just... The degradation that our generation introduced by the age of about 18, they're all doing... I know, they're all doing it. The children at the age of 10 or 12 are doing the same things and uh, much more expertly than we do. So what a situation. People are so fallen. And then in India also, I, as Tukaram Prabhu was introducing me, I spent most of this life living in India, so covering one generation. And I've seen what India used to be 30 years ago and what it is now, and, or even 10 years ago and now. What a difference as the Western way of life is being introduced even into the villages. The old village life is all broken down. So seeing degradation all around us, and it's, it becomes increasingly difficult to imagine how to bring the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to everybody because it requires some kind of piety to accept that, the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If people don't have, if people are totally impious and wicked minded, then uh, they won't be, they won't appreciate the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But, just as I was singing this Song of Sri Gaurnitananda Doya. They sing those lines Pashu Paki Jure, Pashana Bidare, Shuni Jaya Gunagata. That even the animals and the birds will weep or do weep. And the stone will melt upon hearing the qualities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That 
His mercy is unlimited. However degraded society or people may be, or how, however much disturbed people may be, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy can still reach to them. Srila Prabhupada performed a miracle. No one thought that it was possible to spread Krishna consciousness in the Western countries. Those who had gone prior to Srila Prabhupada, they mixed with the more aristocratic and educated section of society, but still they weren't able to make any real impact. And Srila Prabhupada, it seems that when he was going to the West, he also had the idea to preach or try to spread Krishna consciousness among the more sober section of society. But by Krishna's arrangement, Srila Prabhupada ended up among the most degraded section, and literally the most degraded, on the Bowery in New York. Of course, those people, uh, although they did get tremendous benefit by seeing Srila Prabhupada, and even some of them served Srila Prabhupada in some ways, but the people who came to uh, Srila Prabhupada, and some of them became committed devotees of Krishna, were um, deliberately pursuing a career of degradation. They had turned their backs on the prospects of a career in society, of becoming architects, doctors, engineers, or whatever their parents might have hoped them to be, and had gone off on a different career. Now the word career we generally take that to mean the uh, our job advancement, we could say. That's a rough definition of a career, isn't it? Throughout your life. But career also means, just like if you're in a car and it's out of control, that's also called a career. It just kind of goes off all over the place, out of control. Say the car was careering out of control. So... The people that came to Srila Prabhupada, they'd gone off on a different career. They were deliberately uh, experimenting with very dangerous substances. Actually very dangerous. Some people became completely, I mean, literally crazy. Uh, various psychotropic drugs and uh, all kinds of degradation. And nowadays that wouldn't be considered degradation. It's just considered normal. But at the time, most people considered it degraded. Uh, free sex, especially free sex and intoxication, and they, they seem the least likely candidates to take to Krishna consciousness. And in, they were considered crazy by, by the regular members of society what we would call the regular members of society, but somehow they felt some attraction to what Srila Prabhupada was giving. And Srila Prabhupada found that in their attraction there is a spark of hope. And he ministered to these apparently impossible candidates for Krishna consciousness and gave it to them. By the mercy of, or he gave the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, from Srila Prabhupada's vantage point, the people he was preaching among were more fallen than it, it seems that even Srila Prabhupada had imagined. <laughs> when he first came to America, he saw the people uh, covered by the lower modes of nature. When he landed at Boston Harbor, he he made a poem, Markine Bhagavad Dharma, Krishna Consciousness in America. And he saw the people here, they are 
covered by the lower modes of material nature, but still he had faith that if they regularly hear the message of Bhagavatam, actually in this poem he he emphasized hearing Bhagavatam, that by hearing, then they will gradually Tadarajastamo Bhava Kamala Bhadi Astri. He quoted all these verses. Jeta Eta Vitam Stitam Sapve Prasidati. He quoted this series of verses that by hearing the message of Bhagavatam again and again, then gradually they will become purified and situated in pure goodness. So Srila Prabhupada had that he had that hope. He had great faith in the process of Krishna consciousness that the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu can and will extend to everyone if just somehow they can be induced to take to this process at some level. Just like Srila Prabhupada with his first disciples. Uh, when he initiated them, they weren't really disciples at all. They didn't really know what it meant to be a disciple. In fact, after, after the first initiation ceremony, some of the devotees, they went to Srila Prabhupada and asked, them, what does it mean to be a, a disciple? And Prabhupada said, I'm glad you asked that. It means that you accept the Guru as good as God. And they were shocked. You could say that Srila Prabhupada almost tricked them into being disciples. But uh, they didn't know what it meant to be a disciple. After the first initiation ceremony, Srila Prabhupada, he personally cooked a big feast, arranged the whole ceremony. Everyone took initiation and then they said, thank you very much Swamiji, and went home and left him to clear up everything. So they didn't have the idea of service. Gradually, some of them started. The first one, at least according to what's reported in the Lamatos, Kirtan Ananda had the idea that, well, we shouldn't just leave him to do everything. We should do, I mean, it's just what you might call normal human decency, isn't it? If someone's, it's not even, I mean, we're not really talking about being a disciple. If there's an, if there's an old gentleman and he's working hard and cooking everything, you might think to wash the pots. But the uh, level of culture was so low that it took, I mean, not out of, malice or anything. They just didn't, it seems they just didn't even think to do that. But Srila Prabhupada, he didn't push them into that and he, he gradually accepted what services they came forward to offer. But gradually he established what is the actual standard of discipleship, what it means to be a devotee. He's very, very patient in the beginning. And because he saw that these people are long, long, long way from being if, if from being uh, what would normally be considered a disciple. I mean, we hear stories that these are more like from the Zen Buddhist tradition where someone comes to a cave in Japan in the middle of the winter and stands outside and the guru just ignores him and he's standing in the blizzard for three days without anything to eat and when he's almost dead the guru says, okay, come in. Medi now start meditating on the sound of one hand clapping or something like this. So, what tests they used to put the disciple through? But Srila Prabhupada, he practically took a reverse role. That they, they, no, they have no idea of what it means to be a devotee or a disciple, but somehow they have some attraction to chanting the holy names of Krishna. And some of them, even after chanting the name of Krishna, which they have some attraction to, they have no idea why they like it, or what are, what are the uh, spiritual implications of chanting Hare Krishna, but somehow or other they like the chanting. And some of them, after the chanting, would even sit and listen to what Srila Prabhupada had to say, even though they didn't understand it. So, Srila Prabhupada, he somehow or other he found people engaged in the process of Krishna consciousness. That they're willing to chant, they're willing to hear what I have to say, the message of Bhagavatam given in very basic form. And they're willing to take prasadam. Willingness to take prasadam is up to the present day still uh, quite widespread 
except among people who are extremely sinful or unfortunate. Some people don't like to, they will refuse to take prasada. But you're looking surprised. Is it? Well, it does happen. You, don't, you look like you don't believe me. <laughs> In fact, often we're distributing prasadam and some say, no, I'm a Muslim, I can't take it. So they feel, because I'm a Muslim, I can't take it. But then I think, well, if you're a Muslim, why can't you take it? Because if it's if you're a Muslim, that means you don't... What does it mean? You don't believe that this food... You don't believe that Krishna is God. That means that this food is just ordinary food. We say it's Krishna's mercy. But according to your understanding, it should be just food. So you can just take it as a... I'm offering it to you in a friendly way. You can take it. But by, not, by refusing to take it, indirectly they're admitting that it's not ordinary food. <laughs> of course, many of them take prasad also, but some they refuse. So anyway, these are the basic processes of Krishna consciousness, which if people take to them in whatever state of consciousness they may be, they will gradually become purified. Srila Prabhupada began with that faith and with great, with great Patience, I think we lost the sound here. Oh, no. With great patience, he administered the uh, processes. Oh, what happened? The battery was going out, so I had to switch it. Oh, okay. So there is great hope if anyone will take to this process of Krishna consciousness in any condition. Of course, for some people, it is very difficult. If someone's what would be uh, called clinically insane, it may be more difficult or very difficult for them to take to this process. But if people have some some modicum of sanity, which is increasingly difficult to find, no doubt. But somehow or other, if people can take to this process of hearing about chanting, hearing about Krishna, chanting, taking prasada, they can become purified. Of course, that's the, that's the point that Mahatapaka was taking, making. That it's, it's increasingly difficult for people to hear about Krishna because their minds are very disturbed. That is one, that is the principal symptom of people in Kali Yoga. Upadruta, that's mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. People's minds are very disturbed and therefore it's very difficult for them to hear about Krishna because the, the mind is so agitated that the, 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 the logical discussion or the, or, of, the, of the qualities of Krishna or, or even the basic point that we're not the body or spiritual knowledge, it's very difficult for them to process or to accept in their disturbed mind. But somehow or other, if they can take to this process, then they will be purified. This is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, yeah, I was saying I was in Bangladesh and various other countries in the late 1970s and early 1980s. And in those times, in many places, it looked like we weren't, it was very difficult to make any progress. But just gradually by going on and on, but with the steadily going on with preaching Krishna Conscious in, in many of these places the Krishna Conscious movement has grown and flourished so in retrospect I can see that just if we if we try to spread Krishna Conscious then that it will have its effect and you don't know we can never tell how that effect will come up 
in Myanmar, formerly called Burma. I used to go there regularly. And no one, I mean, there were lots of Hindus we used to visit, but they, they were nice, but no one seemed to be very interested in taking up the process seriously. There was one young university student used to come and sit with me, and I used to read Gita to him, but he didn't ask many questions or anything. But there, there came a point in time where he decided he wanted to take up Krishna consciousness full time, and he went outside Burma and got training, and now he's practically alone spread the movement all over the country which sitting in Laguna Beach Myanmar just seems to be some blip on the map but it's it's about 50 million people which is not a small population they are all human beings and uh, candidates for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy they are also human beings sometimes we think don't mind me saying so but sometimes we think in America that that there's a kind of feeling like there's American humans and then there's uh, Europeans, they also qualify, almost, and then others, they're not really human beings at all. It's, a, it's like, you know, if, if uh, there was what, there was one, a few years ago, that Don Pearl, a journalist, was killed by Mujahideen in Pakistan. It's a whole big thing on the, in, in the press for days and days. He was an American journalist, but every day, you know, they're killing the terrorist Pakistani I mean I'm not talking politics here but I'm just talking facts that Pakistani inspired terrorism is killing so many people every day, so many Indians every day in in India but no one cares about that so anyway the point I was making that uh, there are lots of people taking up Krishna consciousness in a, in a, a lot of people so f from one person Many people can take up Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada went to Moscow and it's, it seemed that the programs he was supposed to do, nothing really much came of it. So he had one talk with a professor which later became uh, featured in the book The Science of Self-Realization. But it seems like Srila Prabhupada's visit there had kind of backfired. What, what he had hoped to do, he had hoped to speak to many intellectuals, but it, it, it didn't happen. So anyway, Srila Prabhupada, wherever he is, he can, he's fully content, and he was quite satisfied to sit in his hotel room and uh, go on translating his books. But as it happened, his one of his accompanying disciples, Shama Sunda, who very boldly actually went to Russia wearing the this dress, this kind of dress, was walking around the streets like this, and one uh, Russian young man, uh, along with an, an Indian student who his friend approached him and asked, what is all this about? And this Shama Sunda Prabhu brought him to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada preached to him non-stop for a few hours, told him everything about Krishna consciousness in a nutshell, initiated him, and from him, Krishna consciousness was spread all over the Soviet Union, even though he didn't know very much about it. He only had a few hours understanding, there were no books. So the miracles of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they can still happen and they are still happening. Every person who chants Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Go Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare It is a miracle that anyone is chanting Hare Krishna especially coming from the, the kind of backgrounds that we come from there was once uh, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, uh, like I was saying, they came from a very, very disorderly kind of background. And the principal symptom of people in this Kali Yuga is that the mind is always disturbed. So Srila Prabhupada's early disciples, they were very intensely endeavoring in, to become Krishna conscious. But the devotees, are, they can be very intense and sometimes they would fight among themselves even physically. 
So once in India, Sri Samashila Prabhupada's Western disciples were there, and one Indian gentleman came to Srila Prabhupada and, and shocked because he saw the, these two Western sadhus physically fighting with each other. And he said, Swamiji, your disciples are fighting. And Prabhupada said, you're surprised that they're fighting. I'm surprised that they're chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> Nowadays they don't fight. Not like that anyway. More when there are disagreements, they're solved in a less pugnacious manner. Do you know what pugnacious means? It means bopping people on the nose. <laughs> so, that was the amazing thing. They're chanting Hare Krishna. And it's amazing that people are chanting Hare Krishna. And that magic is still working and will continue to work where any, wherever anyone is seriously trying to spread the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu despite all our inadequacies and our uh, own contaminations if we have faith in the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as brought to us in Parampara by Srila Prabhupada and ongoing even today then that mercy we'll find it's available it, it hasn't gone away it's still there so there's great hope in our own lives that if we take to the process of receiving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy by following this process of Krishna consciousness we will certainly be delivered back to his lotus feet and we can despite all our many inadequacies we can become instruments in spreading that mercy that is my own hope in my own life that despite my own contaminations which I know about very well better than all of you do that I have faith that if I, as Prabhupada said, if you just try to, if you just dedicate this life to Krishna, you will not be the loser. I'm sure that because I'm trying to some extent to serve Srila Prabhupada's mission, that Srila Prabhupada, he will, he will not reject me. So, and if, if Srila Prabhupada is willing to accept me, then despite all our many, many contaminations, uh, certainly, that is, Krishna, He will accept us. Yasya prasada, Bhagavat prasada, yasya prasada nagati kato. If we can somehow or other get the mercy of a great pure devotee, then we can get the mercy of Krishna. Without the mercy of a great pure devotee, no hope. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadha Rishi Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai So there's a few thoughts on the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is a reality which we can all tune into. We can all take advantage of. As much as we like. So Hare Krishna. Are there any comments or questions about this? Please. It's also, uh, I might suggest that you, you can all sing these songs of praise to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from time to time. It's the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's so many songs in praise of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So many. That's a very popular one. We just sung now. Yeah, you have a question. Yes, um, Maharaj, you were talking about that river. The river. And, and two groups of people. Two groups of people, yeah. It's an allegorical story, of course. Um, sometimes we see also in Krishna consciousness there is this, uh, it's not a low. Well, ah, yes, 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 yes. That, that uh, Bhakti Rautako talks about that. There's the Bharavahi, the devotees who are carrying the weights. 
he uses this exact term. One, one is uh, what's the other one called? Can you remember uh, <laughs> the uh, Saragrahi? There's a Saragrahi Vaishnava, one who is seeking the essence, and there is a Baravahi. They're following the process, but they're carrying the weights. They don't want to give up the weights of their material attachments. So that's another thing we were discussing this afternoon about this. Uh, Pure entrance into pure devotional service actually begins. Sometimes we say, "What does it begin with?" With chanting the holy names, with taking prasadam. But the entrance into pure devotional service begins with the desire to find the truth. Satyanu samhitsu. Bhaktisiddhanta used to use this term. Persons who are sincerely looking for the truth, or sometimes it's stated, Shri Prabhupada stated that spiritual life begins, real spiritual life begins when one is disgusted with material life. So actually all this economic depression and all these difficulties in America, it's good, it's very good. People may wake up from the American dream or the American nightmare and think that, well, actually life is miserable. Let me, let me find out what is real life beyond surfboards and all the other wonderful things that people do in California surfing around Sur surferers sufferers Shaila Prabhupada called them sufferers surfers, sufferers yes please did, uh, did I, was that the question you were going to ask by the way? Well, uh, actually I was thinking I about kind of the responsibilities Responsibility. In Responsibilities in Krishna consciousness. But that load, that is that is the burden of love. Accepting responsibilities in Krishna consciousness, that's also a load, but that's a burden of love. The example is given, of course this example may seem a little strange in America, but uh, traditionally a wife will wear many ornaments on special occasions uh, and gold ornaments. Nowadays, I think people they don't wear gold; they wear plastic, isn't it? But gold with diamonds, and even in India today, they still people have all this a few lakhs worth of ornaments. So on special occasions, they'll wear it. So it's a burden. But the the wife wears ornaments for pleasing her husband. That's also something completely foreign to modern American culture. First of all, to have a husband, and then to, and if you have one, to try to please him, that's you know that's against the rules of, of modern life. So it's a very strange society. So this, anyway, the idea is that the woman she wears so many ornaments, and although it's a burden, she feels pleased because her husband is pleased. So we accept a burden in Krishna's service. And actually accepting a burden in Krishna's service is a very good way to get Krishna's mercy because in material life everyone is trying to avoid difficulty. So if we, if we bring this mentality to devotional service, it's not really devotional service at all. We should be prepared to accept the burden of uh, relieving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's anxiety for the suffering of the conditioned souls. Yeah, I saw a hand up over there before. Uh, so let's try and remember the order. Yes, please, sir. What is my preaching experience in Bangladesh? Where's that book, Glimpses of Traditional Indian Life? There's a summary of it. I wrote, I wrote one book called Glimpses of Traditional Indian Life. And whenever people refer to this book, it's actually about um, traditional culture in many parts of India. Of course, Bangladesh is not officially part of India. It's temporarily separated, but it's the same culture. So, if you like, you can take this book and read all about it. So, next hand I saw was... Uh, yes, please. Many 
Yes, it is true that because of Srila Prabhupada's mercy, many people have taken up Krishna consciousness, are taking up Krishna consciousness, and will take up Krishna consciousness. That's true. Yeah, unless people, I'm just restating so that others can hear, unless people have done some pious activities in previous lives, they can't take that up. So what is it? Is it Prabhupada's mercy or our previous pious activities? Well, generally people who have performed pious activities in previous lives, that means what's technically called Bhakti and Mukhi Sukriti. That means pious activities which are conducive for developing a devotional mentality. So it might be, for instance, that a dog gets some prasadam. In his next life, he's a human being, thanks to the prasadam, and comes in contact with devotees and thinks, hey, this is wonderful. That, that purification of consciousness carries through, even without him knowing. That's called Agyata Sukriti, pious activities without even knowing. So yes, the mercy is there for everyone, but some people may be more inclined to accept it than others. There is also, um, Srila Prabhupada said, I, when one devotee asked Srila Prabhupada about this, he said, I have made your pious activities. And sometimes we see that, um, that Srila Prabhupada sometimes spoke very strongly, sharply, and by doing so he cut through lifetimes of illusion that might have it, it might take many many lifetimes to to come to the point of accepting um, Srila Prabhupada as a spiritual authority. People, many people who approached Prabhupada were very arrogant or they, they were complacent and they didn't think they really needed to hear from him. And uh, sometimes people would, Srila Prabhupada would speak, speak very strongly to such people and it would just like turn them around on the spot. There are many examples. So the mercy of pure devotees can sometimes cut through thick layers of illusion. Even of people who, who, are, who are actually arrogant and not very pious. Even a moment association with the pure devotees. Nava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoy. Even by a even by a tiny eleventh of a second, literally it means one can achieve all perfection. But that also depends on one's re receptivity. But any association with devotees is always it's always auspicious, always powerful and always purifying. Even in the case of people sometimes who come to oppress devotees or act sinfully against them, still they get some kind of benefit. Yes, please. Really quickly. In North America, 90% of the time, we're dealing with Western Christianity. In India, I imagine... In, in, uh, in 90% of the time, we're dealing with Western Christianity in North America. Is that so? Maybe not, but most of the time, in my experience, just well, a lot of people don't subscribe to Christianity, isn't it? Anyway, whatever. And in India? Well, well I've been impressed lately by a family of devout Muslims mm. who are fasting for Ramadan. Yeah, yeah, they're Muslims. If they're actually Muslims, it's not easy to be a Muslim yeah. if you're actually a Muslim. You fast for Ramadan, you have to do prayers five times a day. If you're actually a Muslim, you're very religious, no doubt. But I'm... It is a it, it is a mixture of piety and impiety though because it's a strange mixture because they have great faith in God but they're adamantly against the idea of him being a person and uh, anyway I don't want to get too much into it we're not on a Muslim bashing program here but uh, there, it is a mixture of piety and impiety and different people maybe they'll tend towards according to different individuals they may tend toward one side of this some may be like adamantly anti 
Hindu for want of a better term and others they may be they may appreciate um, recently I was in Munich where there are many Muslims living there we had a program in right in the center of the walking streets like the heart of the town and about half the people there was a floating people would come and stay for 10 minutes 20 minutes and about all the, t all the time about half the people there were Muslims which is more than the uh, percentage of the population who were moving around who were Muslims so many Muslims were attracted to come and I, I was speaking with a devotee from one of my godbrothers from Germany he was actually with me in Bangladesh years ago it's the first time we'd met since then <laughs> so, so uh, he told me that uh, in Cologne another city in Germany we have our center in a Muslim area and Tamil presidents from Muslim background and the Muslims actually very much appreciate what we're doing and he said himself when he was preaching in Lebanon in the 1980s he was arrested a few times and uh, you know, there are all these different groups fighting each other. So, arrested means not by the... It was chaos. So, they were arrested by different militant groups. And uh, he was in this kind of makeshift prison with all the people. With, they're mostly Muslims. Some are Christians and that, but mostly Muslims. And they were, they were impressed by him. Every day he would get up and chant and he'd fast on a they were very impressed by his chanting on the Kaddish and they used to call him the Hare Krishna Mullah so people who are what we can say genuinely religious they will appreciate if we are genuinely religious What can we say to a devout follower of Islam? Well, Srila Prabhupada, he, uh, when he, he was actually very eager to preach among the Islamic population, and that's one area which we haven't made much inroads into. And if whoever wants to do that, if you, if you want to get abundant mercy from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's anyone who takes this up to preach among the, the Muslims, that will be. It's a very tough job, but it will. A lot, of a lot of Persians here who are in this part of America who are. Yeah, we just saw at the airport just now. There's that, that that one man, Persian man, who was very. He's very happy to see that we were happy, happily greeting each other. So, uh, what can we say? Well, Srila Prabhupada said, guess what Srila Prabhupada said? He said we should preach to them. That he said that just as the body is tell them this, the body is changing from boyhood to youth to old age, and then there is death, but the person stays the same. Therefore the person is different from the body. Start your preaching like this. Say this is not a it's not just Hindus this happens, it happens to everyone. So Prabhupada said to preach scientifically, not dogmatically. Not that we are presenting something Hindu. In Bangladesh, for Bangladesh, Srila Prabhupada said, do kirtan, and the Muslims will also appreciate it. And that's actually a fact. That many are appreciating in Bangladesh, where the majority population are Muslim. But I don't know why they're Muslim, because Bengalis by nature are very vivacious people. And they, they, for them, singing and dancing is... Uh, is uh, comes very naturally singing, dancing, drama, art they're very artsy kind of especially kirtan and dance they love it they're very expressive people so uh, it's actually a fact that, that uh, all over Bangladesh now movement is very widely spread and the, the Muslim, many Muslims are also very religious people everywhere you go in Bangladesh you'll find every it's difficult to sleep any night because they have all they have all night preaching of Islam in, in the villages. There are people, they come from local Bengalis and then there are people come from Egypt and different countries and they preach Islam. And they, they just preach to people that you should follow namaz, have faith in Allah. And, and they're not fanatical, just telling people to, to be, and, and people come and they love it. They're very, very religious people. So, uh, and, and I'm saying many people are appreciating that, and some some have become 
devotees, initiated devotees, and some some uh, are following all the things, but they due to the social situation they're in, they can't come out of that. When I was in Dhaka earlier this year, I was I was one devotee told me, because I was surprised. I saw two young Muslim girls in their burqas. You know what that is? All this long skirt coming into the temple and bowing down. They said, yeah, they come all the time. Many of them, they come. They take prasad. And when there's a big festival, all the local young boys, they arrange the crowd control. That means all the local Muslims. It's, it's, it's our temple. So, Chaitanya Mahabharata's moon is very attractive. And we, we should avoid getting caught in this Hindu-Muslim paradigm. We don't belong there. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is for everyone. We shouldn't get into this thing of hating Muslims. And that we're not meant for hating anyone. Of course, there are various socio-political issues which are unavoidable in India. And the but anyway, I won't get into discussing that here. <laughs> Yeah, we should be careful. Not and you see, people want to put us in a in a box. If we're in a box, we're in a Hindu box, and then people think, okay, Hindu. Now, Hare Krishna, Hindu. Then, okay, we understood what it is. It means they they turn off the endeavor to understand it. If we say we're Hindu, then we say, okay, Hindu. All right, that's a nice box. You belong there. But if we if we don't put, if we say actually. This is more than some socio-religious phenomena called Hinduism. And people, and it's very difficult for people to understand. But if they are to understand, they have to think about it. So if we jump in this box, then it's very convenient for, for ourselves and others that they don't have to think. They can accept us without thinking. But that's not, they won't be benefited by doing that. And we also, if we get in that box, then we can't present Sarva Padivinir Muktam that we are the Krishna consciousness is beyond all designations. So it may be convenient sometimes to use that designation, but rather we should present that this is this transcends all mundane concepts of religion. This is the science of the soul. When Srila Prabhupada was asked he, about this, he said Krishna consciousness is not a religion, it is a scientific, cultural and philosophical movement for the re-spiritualization of the entire human society. So, we should always remember that. Are you a converted Hindu? People ask us. You cannot be a, you have to be born a Hindu. That's what they used to say. We don't want to be under any mundane flag. We want to be under Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Jai Pataka, as Bhaktivinoda Thakur describes it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan victory flag. So, anything else, or shall we finish here? Well, looks like the uh, we're finishing here. And Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasa Adi Gaur Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna.